My wife and I, we had quite a, a big interest in interior design and we did up a big, big house in, in Amersham where I used to live. And we found that we, we couldn't really find easily really great stuff for the home. You kind of, it was surfing the web and it was um, looking in loads of brochures and magazines and everything and shops. And so that's kind of how Furnish came about. It was that mixture of the web stuff that I was into and the interest in kind of interiors. And so we thought we'd solve the problem. Furnish was funded a combination of private um, investment, which was just me, from um, kind of money I'd made from what I was doing before. And also we had a, round, a small round of angel investment, um, and that was um, Paul Birch um, from Bebo. And also Paul brought in a company called Fubra, which is Bre Brendan and another Paul who run that. Um, and they've been fantastic. They've also been helping with advice and, and mentoring as well, which I think is really, really important in this stuff. I didn't do anything to try and get investment. I didn't write sort of business plans at the time. I was just at a social event and I ran into Paul Birch and that was the day that uh, Bebo sold. And that's just, how, that's just how, and we sort of just got talking. I hadn't got a clue who he was and I told him about Furnish and then we just ended up uh, meeting a fair bit for about, for, for months afterwards, doing lots of lunches and then in the end we got it together. Certainly with angel rounds, it's not so formal where you need to actually get the absolutely perfect business plan and then this document kind of gets passed to this person and they kind of either agree with it or they don't agree with it. There's a relationship side there and you kind of get, you know, you, you get to know your investor quite well whilst you're sort of putting the plan together and, you, you know, there's a bit of a kind of a matey side to it a little bit. Um, and in the end, if they kind of believe in the business and they kind of like where you're going, they might not think you've got the greatest business plan or rather you haven't written it absolutely perfectly. But if they really believe in the business and they can see that there's potential money to be made and there's a gap in the market and, and they also think it's important that they believe in you as an, as an individual, that you're going to actually run the business really well and kind of put your heart and soul into it, then I kind of think that's more important than dotting the I's and crossing the T's on the business plan. Obviously, you, you can't just write absolute rubbish on there, but I think the relationship's more important and you as an individual are important. Furnish is a very lean startup, so there's, not, there's no offices. You know, there's a few of us and we work from home. And I think certainly in the current you know, economical climate, it's very important to operate really leanly and, and not just spend money. Um, and I think, but also the problem with that is that as a result of that, Furnish is growing slowly. If there was a huge amount of money, you, know, you, could, you could grow quicker. And I think that as a result of growing slowly, sometimes it can get very frustrating. Um, so I've never really wanted to give it up and I think it's very good. There's been no, no one has tried to enter the market as a competitor, but there's a huge barrier to entry. Um, first of all, because now, what with the climate as it is, it's not the greatest time to try and get into kind of higher end home furnishings, but also because this is a sort of business that requires, you know, relationships with hundreds of suppliers, and that's a huge amount of effort to do. So I guess from that point of view, it's good, but, so I haven't really thought about giving up. Um, at all from that point of view, but it is very frustrating that things can take quite a long time, far longer than you might think they take. The most important thing if you're a purely online business is organic natural traffic through Google, so you start appearing in the top five results for key search terms. And Furnish does, you know, we're doing really well on that side. You know, we're top five for, for really, really simple terms in, you know, console tables and table lamps and all that kind of stuff. You know, Furnish will be top five Google results across the whole world. So it's, it's very, very good going. And it does take time. But the problem with doing huge, expensive advertising campaigns or pay-per-click stuff or that sort of thing is it's, it does, it's not sustainable because you're, you know, you'll get some traffic for that period and then it kind of drops off. I mean, realistically, if you do have a bit of money to spare, a blended approach is quite a good idea. So a combination of focusing on SEO for your... Um, organic traffic and then obviously other things as well. But if you're just starting out and you want to try and um, get traffic purely for online, then I would say that the most important thing to try and do is just the organic traffic. Naturally be writing really good stuff so that you will naturally be appearing really well in Google. What we do find with Twitter and Facebook is that we kind of automatically integrate with them and we have our own kind of page on Facebook and, and on Twitter and we automatically publish all our editorial there so people when they follow they know when articles are being written and then they kind of follow them. So it does generate quite a lot of traffic to the site 
But in terms of generating sales, that's another question. So again, people use Twitter and they use Facebook to find out about really interesting content, but they don't necessarily use it as a way of spending huge amounts of money. They do sometimes, but I just mean that, you know, exercise some caution there. I'm not some expert entrepreneur. I'm learning everything as I go along and I pick up a huge amount of nuggets and, and hopefully advice as I go. I think a lot of it is a fluke, so it's very difficult to sort of just say you should do it this way. Um, but I've probably wasted money that I didn't need to um, on development and on some design stuff. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think there's any way around that because when you're learning, you still have to get stuff done and then you do it and then you look back at it and you think, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that I did that. Um, also, the business plan stuff. If I actually now dug out my original business plan that I looked up, um, that I wrote before I'd even started this, I would just be so embarrassed. It was just dreadful. And also, I bump into people and, and you, know, you meet people at networking events and they say, oh, I've just got an idea to start a business and, I've, you know, I've just, and I'm just writing my business plan and I'm, I'm probably going to ask for maybe a million or two million from a VC. And I just think, you idiot, that's never going to work. You, you can't do that. And then I think, oh, but that's exactly what I did at the beginning. So that's something else that I would, would do differently. But it's, it's a tricky one because you know, hindsight is this great thing. And that when you first start a business, you've got no idea how it all works. And I expect that I'll probably look back on now in two years and think, oh, I can't believe, how long does it take to grow furniture? It's been going for ages and, you know, we should be making far, far more money now. And I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. So I guess the thing is to just try, you know, don't waste money, um, operate as leanly as possible, but just expect that there's going to be loads of stuff that you've done wrong and there's nothing you can do about it. The best thing about um, owning your own business is just being able to sit in your pyjamas um, at home on your computer and just f run everything, I'd probably say. <laughs> just get out, just sort of just be, look really dreadful and just actually sit there and run a business and not have to care very much about, about what you look like. That's probably a really bad answer, but I quite like that. <laughs>